Today's lecture series will focus specifically on restarting economies through tourism, vaccine politics, global priorities, and destination realities. It has been a year since the world has been grappling with the COVID-19 pandemic, which has resulted in over 112 million infections. Uh, it is a very uh, difficult moment for us all globally, but it's a very exciting moment too, because in the difficulties that we have, there's a promise. And there's a promise for innovation and creativity and, and the real application of the human genius, which we are all instilled with. And that genius will come to work as we recover and recover well. Resilience is not about bouncing back. It's about bouncing forward. It's about adapting and evolving so we come back and we're in a stronger, better place. And the focus that a crisis like this is providing has exposed long-standing inequities and vulnerabilities that if we don't address in a systematic way, we could find ourselves right back in crisis mode again. Yes. Although I have a pessimistic note in saying that COVID is gonna be around for years to come, my view is we have a lot of optimistic elements, but the missing link to go back to Minister Bartley's fundamental point is that these require global solutions not national ones and until the communities wake up to the fact that you don't just fight COVID-19 in your backyard but you fight it in other backyards as well then fundamentally we're going to have a challenge in making tourism sustainable for the foreseeable future. So WTTC does not really feel that vaccines should be a requirement to travel Internal mobility will be supported by testing, robust testing, global frameworks. The thing I worry about is what has often become called the notion of vaccine diplomacy, where actually the first world are using their, effectively, their ability to deliver and pay for vaccines to extend their own influence in, in the developing world. Uh, and that in itself is neither a great tensions for a global approach. It seems to me that it's only through the international institutions in the way that the UN, for example, and the WHO dealt with Ebola or dealt with, for example, many vaccination programs. And this is CAFA's job to provide the science. And, you know, we have a really good working relationship with the GTRMC to show, you know, what, what does the science say and how we can then apply the science to really promote healthier and safe tourism. I am sure that you will be enlightened and more convinced of the need to be vaccinated as we navigate the safe return of international travel. It is a very uh, difficult moment for us all globally, but it's a very exciting moment too, because in the difficulties that we have, there's a promise. And there's a promise for innovation and creativity and, and the real application of the human genius, which we are all instilled with. And that genius will come to work as we recover and recover well. The World Health Organization recently confirmed that 36 countries in the Caribbean will receive 35.3 million in the first stage of shipments. China and Russia are distributing their COVID-19 vaccine also in Latin America. The World Health Organization has consequently warned that the world is on the verge of what they call a catastrophic moral failure. While the US and mostly other wealthy nations have begun vaccinating their citizens against COVID-19, Developing countries, the home of billions of people, receive limited vaccine supplies. In fact, nearly 130 countries have not yet delivered a single dose. Tourism-dependent economies have lost 12% of their GDP compared to global economic contraction overall of 4.4%. Tourism, as you know, is the engine of growth in the Caribbean and its prolonged disruptions spell catastrophe. The current situation facing these economies across the world of developing nations in particular can only be described as a humanitarian crisis. That we must begin to vaccinate all the countries. We cannot afford to politicize responses to the crisis at hand. I'm thus using this opportunity to prioritize tourism independent economies vaccination. I think it is imperative 
that the sector survives during and beyond this current crisis so that it can continue to fulfill its vital role as a significant catalyst of global economic recovery and growth. I am satisfied that within all of us lies the solution to this grave problem, but it is our collective will, our collective wisdom, and our collective innovativeness that will see us through and for us to grow and thrive thereafter.